Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. It only takes two seconds to make two clicks. So let's do it. Let's get back to the video. Hello, 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 Fearless Freedom Tribe. This is Dr. G and we are back for another episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. And as you know, we like to bring it. And today we have Rini Cavallari with us and she's gonna tell you all about what she is up to and who she is. Well, hello. It's so great to be here, Dr. G. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. No worries. No worries. So you have to let the Fearless Freedom Tribe know what you're up to, who you are, all of that stuff. All right. Well, I'm a working class kid from Philly, scrappy still, and uh, grew up in Philly and went on to, um, you know, went into corporate America and fast forward 26 years ago, started a company called Powered by Aspire, and we do uh, leadership development and performance improvement around the globe. And so that's that part of my life. But more importantly, I'm a mama, um, a sister, um, a daughter. Um, I'd like to think I'm a good human. And, um, and uh, you know, I spend my time, I'm married. Actually, I just got married in April. And, oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. And uh and, you know, the big thing that's happening in my world right now is I have a new book out called Head Trash, The Leading Killer of Human Potential. Okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah. And so um, you mentioned some things that we probably should explore a little bit more. So okay. tell us about growing up in Philly. Oh, Philly. What a good town. You know, Philly's got soul. You know, I live in Phoenix now. No disrespect to the Phoenicians here, but Philadelphia, I remember Decade, when I first started my career, I went, I was working for Sheraton Corporation and I went to a training program on diversity and I, everyone around me was taking notes and I kept thinking, and maybe I'm not smart enough to understand what they're taking notes about. And when you grow up in Philly, if you have, like, there's so much diversity, there's diversity of people, there's obviously every culture, there's amazing food, there's great jazz and soul and, and music is a huge scene. And so it's got, it's just got that kind of amazing um, rhythm and, and neighborhoods, and it still has neighborhoods. And I, I just love that. You know, that's a kind of a cool thing about Philadelphia. And like yourself, I played lacrosse uh, and um, thoroughly, you know, I'm a sports girl. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. And actually the Philadelphia influence, I just took up, I played the flute for years, but I just took up learning jazz flute. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I go, I take that back to Philly because like, you know, it's being able to see those great musicians just totally rocked my world. And so, uh, but I got to tell you, I'm not going to quit my day job. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's real. <laughs> it's, it's easier to listen to it. <laughs> like I was at a jazz club the other night and it was so awesome. And I'm thinking, man, they need a jazz flautist. And then I thought, but it wouldn't be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then so, but Philly is not really known for lacrosse. How did you end up getting into lacrosse? I mean, it's a big city, right? Well, it actually it is. It's that Maryland North corridor. And so it was our, our area, um, our community was huge in lacrosse, men's lacrosse oh, and okay. women's lacrosse. So yeah, it was, it was, you know, a big sport in my community. Yeah. Got it. Now, okay. because think about Philadelphia, there's Philadelphia and Pittsburgh 
And it's like almost two different states. You know, Philadelphia, mm-hmm. New York, South Jersey are kind of of the same mojo. And then you got right. the, you know, the yeah. more maybe some might say sophisticated size of the state. <laughs> I'm not so sure Pittsburgh's sophisticated, but hey, who knows? Um, but definitely like it's a little bit different vibe and all from the okay. from, you know, okay. the other side of the state. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious because, you know, um, so I lived in New York City for a while and you know, lacrosse wasn't where I, I didn't learn lacrosse in New York City. Long Island had lacrosse. Um, but you know, like in the city itself, there was no, like, there weren't like a lot of open fields. You didn't have a lot of football fields where you could go practice lacrosse and then you would need like 10 other people and all these other things. So there were like a little bit of, uh, there were a few obstacles in the way there. Um, I didn't learn lacrosse until I went to college. So that's why I was asking that question because having been from an urban environment, I just did not, I didn't, I guess in my mind, I had not thought of Philly as being a place where you could pick up a field sport like that. Well, but now uh, I'm learning something. So that's yeah, good. <laughs> I should, I should clarify though. Cause I think you're, you're right. I say Philly because no one would know my home, my town, you know, 30 minutes outside of the city. So I was Got 30 it. minutes Got outside it. of the city in a suburb. Uh, but I, you know, my, my soul is in the city. I'm, Got it. you know, I'm an urban girl. I just, uh, I grew up outside. So. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now that makes sense. Cool. Um, and then you mentioned that you started your own business. So you have to let us know about that. Like, how did that come about? Was there any fear involved? How did, how did, how did you make that happen? So uh, was there any fear involved? That's so, yeah, the answer is yes, always. I, I think that, you know, anybody who's doing something that is out of their comfort zone is going to have varying degrees of fear. Now, I didn't have much to lose. So my fear was probably less than someone, you know, because I didn't have a child, like I have a daughter now. Uh, you know, it's bigger decisions when you have bigger responsibilities. So I actually had an opportunity in corporate America to become a C and a partner in a firm. Okay. And um, back 26 years ago, there weren't many women who were having those kinds of opportunities. I felt a lot of pressure to take that offer, but something in my gut didn't feel right. Like it just was more of the same. And I, you know, when you, when you become a partner, you're getting married. You know, that's how it is. You, you know, partnership is a partnership. Doesn't really matter what kind. It's it's the coming yes. together. And, yes. and I just felt like, you know, what they wanted me to do would might have been might have served them, but it wasn't really what turned me on. I was doing that work because actually my male mentors, which were mostly male back then kept telling me, you should do this next. You're going to, you know, I, can't, I grew up in, in sales and marketing and branding and strategy and all that. And then they talked me into, um, you know, I loved buying, I used to buy and sell hotels, but we bought so many that they said, you know, well, we want you to oversee operations. Okay. And I honestly hated it. Like you're supposed oh. to love, you're supposed <laughs> to love that. Right. That's... And I, it wasn't my, it wasn't my thing. And I did it for 18 months and it was such a gift. You know, I believe like, you know, if you stay open, the universe usually gives you exactly what you need. Exactly. And it was a That's gift. so true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a gift because there was this opportunity that I should take My financial security. You know, I didn't grow up, you know, like, like uh, I'm for it, you know, <laughs> financial security. And yes, indeed. And, and, you know, a fancy title and I'd be sitting at the grownups table. That was the truth. And, but it didn't feel right for me. And I literally came in, I took the weekend to think about the offer, came in on Monday and resigned. And for a strategist to resign without a plan, you want, that's where the fear is because my wiring, that's where, that's kind of my sweet spot. And my wiring was like, you must be, after I did it, you must be nuts, right? And, but really, the, I was so blessed because people who I had worked with for years started calling me and saying, I hear you're going to start your own company. And I had one person in particular, he asked me, his name was Paul Margetson out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. And he said, what is your nut, Remy? 
as in your financial. What is your what? Oh, What's your okay. financial nut, right? What's your yeah, nut? Yeah. Your financial nut. And I, you know, I had very little, like I, I owned a house, but you know, it, it wasn't like I was like rolling in heavy, you know, commitments financially, which is another thing that decreases your fear. Um, yes, it but, does. <laughs> uh, but um, especially when you're a working class kid from Philly, right? And so because we all have those imprints uh, that really impact us and, and money was definitely one for me. But anyway, he, he literally said to me, I'm, uh, he, he paid me $3,000 a month or no, $2,500 a month. And it covered my, almost my entire nut at the time. Now it's been a long time, 26 years ago, you know, it's so. It's, no, but still know. that's, that's considerable. I mean, even if you take into account the time factor, I mean, that's a quite, that's quite a bit. You know, Absolutely. and that was just one client. That was one client. One that. client, and because of his generosity and and kindness, I mean, you know, and we had done great work together for years. So we had a, we, you know, life is about the relationships that you create for yourself, in my opinion, right? Because yeah, absolutely no, whether it's work, friendship with your children, whatever it is, relationships for me are are at the center of good things and bad things, right? The quality of the mm -hmm. relationship. So, yeah. but because of that relationship, he allowed me to build a company that to this day, we do um, things that we love with people that we like. And that's important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause who you hang with is who you become. Right. Oh and my, so, that's so yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. And so, right. So he really gave me this opportunity to become an entrepreneur because, you know, my parents were both school teachers. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know anything about being an entrepreneur. I knew that sure. that sounded yeah. like a good idea, mm -hmm. but like, I hadn't really thought yeah, yeah. through it because yeah. I had a weekend, right. I hadn't really, yeah. I thought about what I, I knew what I didn't want to do. Dr. G, but I didn't yeah. know what I wanted to do. Right. Sure. And that was where the fear was. So, but I got lucky because, you know, I, you know, he, he give, he gave me this opportunity and I uh, don't get me wrong. He, it wasn't like free money. I had to work my butt. No, you had to work. Of course. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No. But yeah. It, that's it, a... <laughs> but it set me on a different trajectory than fear would have set me on. Indeed. 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 Yeah, because there's something to be said for being able to, you know, keep the lights on and, you know, have the water running still while you're while you're building your business. <laughs> or like during, you know, COVID, you know, I, last year was my 25th anniversary of Aspire. I had never lost any money in the firm um, and I had saved my money because I have this imprint, you know, our brains are full of imprints. And I had this yes. imprint, like, you know, freedom to me is about, you know, the freedom to choose, right? Mm -hmm. That's like, that's like a big talk about commerce. That's a big commodity right there to me. Yes. For me. yes. And it's yes. important to know what your commodity is. And, cho and choice to me is that uh, choice for myself and then freedom of choice for anybody who, whatever your choice is, it's none of my business. Yours is yours. Mine is mine. And, um, but I, I have to say that when you have that sense of um, uh, uh, that you're in a safe zone financially, you can really become creative and, oh, and yes. build something of, of substance from the very beginning versus if you're, you know, you're trying to keep mm -hmm. the lights on. And with COVID, mm -hmm. because I had saved my money, you know, we made it through. It wasn't delightful in my 25th year. To yes, I know to money. be going through that. Yes, like, I'm like you That's know I'm supposed uh... to be I'm supposed to be out of that that five you know that time frame yes. we tell you like if you yes. make it past here and if you make it past there and you could be a legacy company if you make it past here and you know right yeah baloney. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> well, I think I think that that thing that we just went through or I guess we're kind of still going through that thing is like unprecedented. So. Yeah, it's not going to follow any of the algorithms whatsoever. So, no, yeah. no, no. And we made it through. And I, I'm all the more grateful that I, you know, so I, I do work that I love because I can't imagine how hard it would be being a leader, running a business, delivering a work product if I didn't like what I did and the people around me. Like that's now that's hard work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, that's good. And I'm glad that you said that 
because believe it or not, there are individuals who are doing just that, that hard work that you described. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's okay so, to have hard work days, you know, even a cup, even hard work weeks, but we, you know, we have a lot of people who, you know, your life, you have to make that really bold choice to say, this isn't what I want. So how do I start to move towards what I want? so that I can have the life I, uh, I have. And, and that really goes back to, you know, our head trash. Because mm -hmm. it limits us, you know? So yeah. those, those negative, nasty voices, you know, if, if you talk to me the way I talk to myself, we would not be friends. <laughs> you know? Fair enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the self-talk is usually the worst, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, and you're right. We really don't acknowledge how powerful it is you know, and it's funny because every time I think about that, like, I, I don't know if you ever used to watch um, Saturday Night Live um, back in the day when they had this one character, his name was, uh, oh goodness, forget what his name was. But anyway, he used to always look in the mirror and say, I'm good enough, I'm <laughs> smart enough, and people love me, that guy. Um, and so that guy, no matter what happened, you know, his self-talk game was so strong and through yeah. the most adverse situations. But, you know, if we flip it and our self-talk is the opposite of that, guess what? What will happen to us is devastating, right? Like we will never be able to have the strength, the resilience to overcome whatever life throws at us. We'll just kind of cower in the corner and just shrivel up, right? So what we tell ourselves, that recurring uh, audio that's on replay is a super important. And so when you said earlier, you know, you're, you don't, you're so grateful that you're in a space where you can, you only surround yourself with people who you want to be around because your company that you keep is so important. It really is, you know, and so having a choice or making those choices impact you greatly, but it also impact like your entire network, right? Like everybody around you. Because if you keep the negative company and you're in a negative space, you're going to be emanating that negativity as well, which is not very productive, right? In society in general. So having positive company, having company that's going to like drive you out of your comfort zone, drive you to be better, drive you towards excellence. That's really the best way to go. Like that's what you strive for. So I am so excited for you that you're in a space where you can make that choice in your clients, in your, um, in those that you associate with, because that's not small potatoes. That's huge. You know? Well, I do my best and I just don't want any of your <laughs> listeners to think that I got it down. You know, I wrote a book on head trash because I'm an expert on it. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So let's just keep perspective on, you know, what, what my expertise is in. And, and, but I do think what you're saying, Dr. G, you know, it's about the health of our emotional brain. You know, we have a physical brain that's the functioning thing, but we actually have this emotional brain. And there's two sides to it. There's the disconnected side and the connected side. And, you know, so some of the reasons I've made brave choices is because I've had imprints in my life that were living in the connected side that gave me courage, right? I've also had imprints living in the other side, the disconnected side, where fear and worry and anxiety mm -hmm. and, and all those kind of negative sucking, you know, you don't listen as well. Actually, you don't listen generally at all in the disconnected side. You, mm -hmm. you don't collaborate like you do with the connect when you're on the connected side. So if we think of our brain, like, and cut it in half and say, here's the connected side, here's the disconnected side. The goal of life is to spend as much time as possible on the connected side of your emotional Absolutely. brain. Absolutely. And that's where I think, you know, as you talk about fearless freedom, right? Fearless freedom is on the connected side of your emotional brain because that's, you have that courage. It doesn't mean that you don't worry. It doesn't mean like right. I, I walked around saying, oh, you know, I don't, you know, it'll happen. You know, like it's, it, I do believe in positive affirmations and, you know, I, I meditate, I journal, I, because I proactively put myself on that connected side, but it's not just fluffy stuff. It's like, you have to really do the work um, to be able to have fearless freedom. Like that's 
that's hard work. It's not just a flippant kind of thing. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is hard work. Yeah. And it's hard, especially as professional women, you know, we wear a lot of hats yourself for sure, you know, and now you'd like, you're like living in new places and, you know, just finding a grocery store and, and, yes, and, yes, and yes. maybe the spices that you used to cook with and, and who knows what else, those changes that, you know, if we embrace them and that was what you said when we were talking, you know, for the show, like you and yeah. the kids, they thought you'd all embrace them. So the adventure is joyful. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you are stuck and you got to have it a certain way and you got to, oh, yeah. you know, this has to be that and that and that, and you just decrease your chance for joy. And when, you know, I think about what is success, success to me is joy. Like how much joy is in my life? And if my joy factor is low, I need to get, you know, fearless quick. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Yes, indeed. No, that's good. That's, that's good stuff. That is really good. Oh my goodness. Hey, it's Dr. G. And I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available. If you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show. And then, so, so you, um, so you made like, that's such a bold move that you did back then, you know, just like saying, you know what, what do I, cause you, it's almost like you, you just were like, you know what, I'm not going to be, I'm not getting like, you trusted your gut. You're like, I don't get a good vibe here. Like, I don't feel like this is the thing for me. And then you were just kind of like, you know what? I don't have really much to lose. Right. So that was, that was helpful. And then you had already, I guess, put it out into the universe, as you you mentioned before that, you know, you really only want to accept certain things into your life. And these are positive energizing things. Right. And so then the universe answered in her infinite wisdom. And she, you know, she gave you this client that was going to be able to help you to keep the lights on while you build your business, you know? So it's like, Wow. You know, and so when I tell people that, you know, is this a matter of putting your desires out there, having the bravery to have Mm -hmm. positive thinking surrounding it and realizing that you will still have fear because I mean, I'm sure you had fear, like you're, you're doing something completely different. You're completely on your own. You know, this is, it's, there's nobody that is behind you. There's no, you know, like there's nobody that you can kind of turn to if the thing doesn't work, it's you because it's your baby. It's your, it's your business. And so, you know, you still did it though, you know? And so people, people tend to not want to try things. They tend not to want to, um, put themselves out there because of fear and you, you shown that if you continue anyway, despite the fear, you can have success. And so that's, that's huge. That speaks volumes. And I'm sure there's somebody listening right now who may be at a crossroads that the same crossroads that you were in maybe 26 years ago, and they're deciding, do I go my way and figure it out? Or do I stick with what's known and what's quote unquote safe and be unhappy? And so you've inspired somebody, right? Because clearly it has worked for you. And clearly you have survived, even despite this ridiculousness that we went through last year. 
right? And yeah, yeah, I, I did. Um, I will tell you. So what I love, you know, what you just said is what I believe, and that's so, I, like I have an absolute belief that when we're clear on our intention, and that's why head trash, you have to learn how to dump it or at the very least manage it. Because when we have all that noise in our brain, we can't get clarity. And when we don't have clarity, we can't be intentional. We're just kind of like walking around in the dark and, and hope becomes our strategy. You know, hope is a hope is a beautiful thing for your soul. It's not such a great thing to guide your life like, oh, I just hope it all works out. You know, it's going to work out because you decide what it is that you want and how you're going to get at it. And you start plotting and chipping away at it. And the same thing for me last year with COVID, you know, did I have fear? Uh, yeah. After 26 years, I had fear that I hadn't had before. New things come up. I, you know, I, I, I had, did I have sorrow? Yeah. First time in 26 years, I had to lay people off. Some have worked oh, for me goodness. for years. You know, I wept and wept, but there was a decision that had mm. to be made. And so it's, you know, it's not just, you know, once you get clarity and you're intentional, then you have to, you have to move forward with the, you know, what I call productive action. Mm. Um, and that was productive action. At the time I had to do that, I helped people find new jobs. I, I tried to do it with, you know, as much love and, you know, respect to the reality of like, I couldn't keep them on the payroll and right. they had dedicated years of their life. And it was just, it was, it was terrible. Uh, so, I, you know, sometimes, you know, I always want people to know, like, it isn't with, it's, it's not easy. Like, you know, I, I didn't have a parachute. My parents, you know, you know, I put myself through college. I paid off. I still have the document of that student loan. <laughs> That's right. That is that is a badge of honor. <laughs> I got that document. Man. Like, there's a lot of documents you throw out after seven years. That one that you is keep. One. That one you keep. <laughs> like, but you know, you should. But you know, when you make the choice, like I did, okay, I'm going to college, and how will I get scholarships, and how will I fund this, and what else can I do, and how can I find a job that can help me in a way that I can do when you really get intentional about the outcome that you want you're going to move towards it and if it can happen to me it can happen to anyone I know you, we hear that with people but you know I, I look at people far more successful certainly than I am and I, I look at their um, the, the, their tenacity to make something of substance happen for them and usually for others you know, last year with Aspire, I remember in one, like four or five days, we lost $1.4 million, which was a lot of money Gosh, to me. That's a lot of money. I, like, you know, I was sitting there going, okay, this is, this is real now. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't, maybe this could be a problem. And this was early March. And we put together a resilience plan, um, which, you know, I'd done before, but as a company, I sat down with our COO and said, okay, you know, obviously we need to cut costs and obviously we need to see what revenues we can save and how we have to operate to keep them. And then there were, there was, um, you know, operating efficiencies, like how do we streamline what we do? But the fourth strategy was give. And it was our give strategy. And we've always had a give strategy in our company. But what I came to understand even 26 years later was that giving put us in the connected side of our emotional brain and that's where gratitude is. And when we give and we have that, that, that inherent beautiful exchange that is not the intention, but it is the return. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we can all be doing things like that. You know, I look around the world right now and, you know, there is an epidemic, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have an epidemic called COVID, we have, you know, or a pandemic called COVID. We have an epidemic of head trash that puts all this negative energy and we're all being sucked in different directions and, and minimizing each other. And we really have to work on the end game, which is unity. Right. And so, you know, my life, I try and find, you know, ways to, you know, connect through love and, 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 you know, but I'm a businesswoman, so I don't want people to think, you know, this is fluffy, you know, BS it, it's business, but yeah. for me to live in the place where I am at my 
best use, highest productivity, having a great time. I live in that, that, that connected side where gratitude is. And, and by doing certain things, we shift. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it's interesting that you um that you mentioned that because I think you now people don't typically when they're going through hardship, they don't think about the fact that if you make a decision to pay it forward, if you make a decision to focus not on your own troubles, but you focus on how can you assist others to alleviate a problem that they have, that 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 action just like exponentially improves their situation like it just does because again there is something called karma I don't know if you believe in it or not but like there's there's something called karma that's very powerful and so if you are focused not on all of the quote-unquote bad things that are happening to you but then instead focus on how can you make something better or make things better for somebody else what happens is you eventually end up getting a blessing returned to you but in a greater magnitude than if you had not previously done so so it's it's such a amazing phenomenon to see it and in and i find it quite interesting that that was what you focused on during you know that that thing we just went through because it's it's not usually typical for a business to assess that piece of things and say well how can we give you know how can we make sure that we are doing our part even though we are in a situation where you know we're hemorrhaging funds or you know however things are are being impacted by the pandemic so you know that's that's to me that's very impressive because that's not something that you typically hear people say well, you know thank you and thank you so much and i have to say like for it it when we can be in our power if we want to be in our power we have to be in the connected side of our emotional brain and when we're in fear it sucks us and 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 limits us and why would we want to do that to ourselves that is a question right. I ask myself as I watch the news right. or whatever else. I'm like, right. really? Right. Like, why are we right. doing this? <laughs> yeah. I, so what a better way? Wanna, yeah. Why would we want to hurt ourselves? It, it, in, it, you know, it's, it's tricky enough to navigate with all the other obstacles that are in life um, that we can't control. But what can we control? We can control what's going up, going on in that brain. We just have to do things, whether it's, you know, proactively, like, you know, as I shared in the book, I, we actually did a study of over a thousand people and what were the things they did to get into the connected side of their emotional brain. And there were 29 that came up more than any, just 29, like, you know, my, 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 you know, editor was like, well, can't we have one more like 30s? I know, make it 30. I'm like, no, I'm like, it was well, 29. Well, I'm numbers, a strategist. Our numbers are good. Yeah. Oh, they well, say, right. In marketing, aren't our numbers good sometimes? Well, here, here it is. It was 29. So it had to be 29, you know, so Fair enough. Uh, somewhere as simple as gardening, which any of us can do, you know, we can, oh, yes. you know, oh, it's gardening. a little thing. We put our hands in the dirt. We don't have, yes. you don't have to have a yard. You, uh, you can have, I, I remember I, when I was living in San Diego and I had a little courtyard and in, in my courtyard, I had, I called it a French garden to you and I, it looked like a bunch of terracotta pots, but it was my French garden. That's okay. And, and I didn't, I, I couldn't afford to put watering systems in or and I went out there and watered it, but it was like, like a nurturing thing, you know, as I said, like I meditate in the morning because I've got a very busy mind. So I, I got to have a guided meditation to kind of get me into, you know, that kind of quiet clarity space. You know, I'd say like a year ago, a year ago when it was just completely nuts in the States, um, just, you know, politically and, and with what we were going through and, and, and just all the elements that were happening. Um, I, I really had to stop watching the news first thing in the morning because it oh, threw yeah. me into the disconnected side of my emotional brain. I hadn't even gone to the bathroom and I was already in a bad mood. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I was pissed yeah. and it, I hadn't yeah. even gotten to the bathroom yet. Yeah. Or yeah. opening my email, like while I'm still in bed, like, you know, 
I, like how we have to make sure that the habits we have are serving us, are serving to, to soothe us and that those habits put us in the connected side. You know, I, this morning I go for a power walk when I, in particular, like I walk really, really fast. I had a record mm-hmm. today, man. It was like 38 minutes, man. I'm oh, like, awesome. Hey. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> a record for me. You know, I don't compete with anybody else. So a record for me. Hey, I was just happy I got out of bed at six o'clock. But the point is like that helps clear my mind and, and, and allow mm-hmm. me to fantasize and be creative and think about possibilities versus if I do nothing. You know, and everybody, some people like to run. I always say the only time I run is if someone's chasing me. (laughs) That's it, I am done running. Um, You know, or hike. Um, So, you know, cooking, a lot of, there was a lot of people who cooking, you know, for me, it definitely soothes my soul at the end of the day. Um, And and not rushing, you know, for those of us with with kids, you know, my daughter's 20 now. But for you know, 18 years or whatever, I got up in the morning, I, I cooked her breakfast, made her lunch, took her to school, that kind of pattern. And when I learned to get up 30 minutes early so I didn't have to get into craziness, like, you know, they say hit the ground running. Uh, I, 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 for me, <laughs> I, I need a little runway room. I, I can't hit the ground running. It just doesn't, right. I don't hit with graciousness. <laughs> I hit the ground, man. So I think about those are the habits there that can really help us. And when we're doing things, you know, whether it's, you know, maybe it's one too many glasses of wine or you're doing edibles or whatever your thing is like, check back in. And is it serving you or is it not serving you? I'm not, you know, I don't judge because everybody's got to find their own, that own thing. But I certainly had to step back, um, even earlier this year and say, what are, what habits do I need to check in on again and mm. reset? Cause life yeah. is, you know, you know, they say life is about the evolution, right? Well, so yes, are is. we as humans, right? We keep mm-hmm. evolving. That means evolution just means change is a big word for change. Mm-hmm. And so what is it that I need to change next to have what I want next? That is great. That's kind of how I look at it. And so you have to let us all know how people can get in contact with you. Like, oh. do you mind um, if it's something like, for example, um, when, you know, when I say your name, they're automatically going to put two E's. So oh. stuff like that. <laughs> okay. So, okay. you know, if, if so, do you mind uh, letting the audience know how they can get in contact with you? Absolutely. So first of all, any questions you have, if you want to talk to me, my personal email is for my firm is Rini, R-E, and as a Nancy, I-E, at Perfect. poweredbyaspire.com, P-O-W-E-R-E-D-B-Y-A-S-P-I-R-E.com. So shoot me any questions, anything you've got on your mind, likes, dislikes, what have you. So for your listeners, you know, you can also reach me. Myheadtrash.com is a website full of tools to help people get to the connected side. Um, And you can also, there's a really cool assessment that you can take there called the big lie, which talks about what's the biggest trigger you've got, because there's four and we all have one. So what's yours? Mm -hmm. And when we know what that trigger is, now we have a better chance of managing it. Um, and because, you know, understanding leads to our ability to navigate ourselves, right? Not be self-deceived, which scares me. So, um, so myheadtrash.com and yeah. um, you can find that you can find um, Head Trash, the leading killer of human potential um, uh, on Amazon, or actually if you go to My Head Trash, it'll click you through or what have you. Perfect. Perfect. And is that the book behind you there? Yeah, I can't really read what that says. That's it right there. Because it looks like kind of looks like a brain. That's why. Well, you need to send me your address. I'll get you a copy, man. You know, people. Oh, that's beautiful. (laughs) Love it. Love, love, love that. Love that. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Great. Great. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, um, definitely. uh, That is great because then if somebody is listening and they don't have access to the show notes, you know, then they can reach out to you without having to like 
oh, I'm going to do that later. And then they, they don't, right? Because, you know, that's how we do. We're like usually listening when we're doing something else and something piques our interest. And we're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get in contact. Whereas if you say it, then they have it and then they're more likely to, to reach out. So that's perfect. Awesome. This has been such a great conversation. You know what? We are at that point in the show where we do our tradition and that is fill in the blanks. Okay. So Rini, are you, re- are you ready? I'm ready. ready for this. Okay. All right. It awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You see, Rini's like, I was born ready, lady. Born ready. <laughs> well, most <Okay>. of the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first one is, to me, fearless freedom is. Uh, to me, fearless freedom is the confidence to choose, to make a choice. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the next one is, if I am fearless, I will. Be doing things I love. That is awesome. And then last but not least, my battle cry is. So this one's easy for me. Uh, Love is all there is. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and spending some time with us here at the Fearless Freedom Tribe. We appreciate you. And we are looking for all of the amazing things that you will continue to do. Yeah. So we're we're grateful that you spent time with us. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. G. What a delight you are. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.